Okay, this is the end, or the beginning actually, of part two of the tour of Wrinkle Free Diva's workshop. Putter is still standing guard by the door, not doing a very good job though, because as you can tell, she is curled up and she is sleeping. Right, Putter? Yep, she's not stirring. So let's continue with our little tour. We left off in that corner over there talking about my ribbon dispensers and now I want to take you over here um, in the first of two larger oak bookcases again painted white on the bottom row I have all of my photo albums and then coming up on the right on the next shelf many of my card making supplies so those are all cards and envelopes and to the right of that is another basket that I have that contains a lot of chipboard letters now my chipboard letters a lot of them came from different sets and it was getting really difficult to store them and sometimes you only want one letter or you don't want or you want to mix and match them so what I did is and I got this idea from somewhere a long time ago these are sandwich bags and I printed the letter each letter of the alphabet on a piece of cardstock there are grommets in the corners and each one of these contains cardstock letters as you can see and then I have one for numbers okay okay right above that um, I have my inks um, that shelf there is a recycled cassette holder that I found at Goodwill. Goodwill is good for all kinds of things you guys. Um, it is painted white and next to that I have some Sterilite drawers um, that contain my smaller ink pads, my white inks, black inks, and my pigment inks. And then the next shelf up again I have another one of the recycled cassette deck holders, cassette tape holders with all of my distress inks. And then to the left of that, I have these pen holders that contain all of my zig markers. You guys remember those? Um, a lot of my creative memories pens and other various types of pens. I used to store Copics in these as well. I had three more, um, but they were starting to fill up and it was getting difficult to find the colors that I needed. And so I have those in another bin, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, more card making supplies, as well as some of the beautiful cards people have sent to me that I keep for inspiration. Underneath that, in this cabinet, is um, my flower soft embossing powders, my perfect pearls, and most of the rest of the drawers are empty. This little cabinet also came from Ikea years and years ago. I think they may still actually make these though. Um, and I skipped something over in that corner over there. So let's take a little walk over there. And in this corner is my camera. My Copic storage. This is one of the large art bin cases and fluorescent lighting covers. I believe these are what they're called. And if you look on Pinterest for Copic storage, you can find the instructions for these. Very easy to make, very quick to make. And good thing for me, I already had the art bin that wasn't being used, it was in a closet but it makes it really nice to be able to just pick up your whole collection of Copics and go. Um, um, I got the idea actually 
from Jennifer Dove, who I'm taking a Copic class from right now, and she had her stored this way. And using that storage, it will hold every single color of Copic that they make. And now let's go over here to my second bookcase, or the taller bookcase. Bottom shelf are Pioneer 3-Up albums, which I store all my pictures in till I decide whether they're going to be scrapbooked or triaged according to my Library of Memory system. Um, the two boxes on the left also contain pictures, and then these two plastic boxes contain completed cards. And you see right there, there's another box from Snapfish of pictures that need to be moved into my library of memory system. Next shelf up, I think that brown box has pictures in it as well. Um, I have my spell binders, the larger spell binders in art bins. These are like the mega size spell binders. And then to the left, or to the right, so sorry, um, are my embossing folders and I do write the name of my embossing folders on the top a long time ago when I actually put them in alphabetical order I had put tabs on all of them but the ones that I used a lot the tabs started falling off so I have stopped worrying about the tabs I figure if they're alphabetical I can still find them this box had some miscellaneous things in it as well but right now it just contains my 52 card pickup techniques and recipes cards, another class that I took at Big Picture Classes. Going up to the next shelf, all my flowers stored in these cute little Sterilite boxes that I actually picked up at Walmart. I love these because they stack so nicely and they're actually not very expensive. I think they were. I don't know, right around a dollar a piece or something like that. Not very expensive at all. Next shelf up, I have all of my Lucky 8 punches, which are really hard to store because they are so large. And then above that, in another Jet Max cube, and I think this one actually came from Target a long time ago. Um, it's like the half size as you can see. Um, most of my creative memories, basic shape punches, and my label maker is hiding under my little lady's skirt over there. And then this little unit right here is a recycled DVD holder that was wooden and it was painted white as well. And I just kind of put miscellaneous items there, little inspirational items and cards. Um, and then over here, another one of the half size Jet Mac cubes. I think they came two to a set, this one and the other one. In here, I have my regular size spell binders, the sets, and they are on magnetic um, vent covers. And they're labeled with my label maker so that I can find them. So this drawer contains labels and other shapes. This one contains my circles, my ovals, squares, rectangles, etc. And these are actually also CD boxes. Um, they run about $6 a piece when you can find them online. Um, the company that I used to get them from has been out of them for a while. I think they're made by Memorex. Um, this drawer right here contains stamping images. So when I print some things out, um, sometimes you know you print out several to a page and you don't use them all. So then I put them in here. Problem is, most of the time I don't remember I have them and I just print out more. Or I never use the same image twice. As many of you know, I don't color a whole lot. but. One of these days, it's going to get better. 
And then over here is probably one of my favorite storage items right here. What you're looking at are all of my glimmer mists, my stickles, my smooch inks, my glitters, my liquid pearls. And they are actually stored in. These are the nail polish shelves of plexiglass or acetate or whatever you call them. Um, the nail polish holders that a lot of manicurists have in their shops on the wall. And I actually admired it in my manicurist shop and was saying, oh, that would be perfect for storing wooden stamps, which is actually what I had originally thought of it for. And she ended up buying another one because she wanted a bigger one and she gave me her smaller one. And then she got me the second one at her discount. So I have two of them actually side by side. And they are screwed into the wall so that they don't fall over. Um, but I absolutely love them because they hold so much. And now we're going to go over to my closet where I've had the closet doors removed thanks to Honey again. And this is actually what I like to call my die cut station. And on the top shelf, I have a bunch of cigar boxes, my sewing machine, um, all of my Cricut cartridges, and my Cricut books. And then at the very top, because I really haven't figured out a good way to store these, are my Spellbinders Grand Eyes. And they are in this little case here, which I got from Crop and Companion. Um, and they're on these magnets here. Um, I don't have a lot of these sets, but it turns out I actually have two of one set because I bought a second set not realizing that I already had it. And then over here are my sandwich instructions for my ebossing machine, which is right here. And then I have all of my Martha Stewart punches and other miscellaneous punches that will fit on the bi-gel rails from Ikea. Over here is my Silhouette machine. And then my Caterpillar Pro, oh, the greatest uh, paper cutter. I love it, love it, love it. It'll slice off a sliver of paper. Um, I have a few more Martha Stork punches right there. And then to the right are all of my EK Success punches. And those are in those little fabric trays that I actually got at Target. They're not meant to be standing up, but I haven't had any trouble with them standing up. But I actually have four of them there. Um, I don't know if you can see that. I actually have four of them. You can see where they're coming together right there. And then to the right of that, another great Goodwill find under $10. And I have more of my EK Success punches in here. Underneath the table, I have some more stacking cube thingies or shells, my baby cricket, my sewing machine, my cuddle bug, which I won't get rid of because it's great for taking to a crop, my cinch, all my Xyron machines are down here, and then right underneath I have my scoring boards. And then finally, to the left of that underneath as well, underneath the countertop, is this kitchen cart, which actually was in one of my kitchens many, many years ago. And I've repurposed it. And in this drawer, I have all of my, my cutting plates for my ebosser. In this drawer, I have lots of miscellaneous stamps, which most of the time I forget that they're there. And underneath 
is my expression, my createopia, and a few miscellaneous items. So, that's pretty much it, everybody. I hope that you have enjoyed your tour of Wrinkle Free Diva's workshop. And if you have any questions about how I've stored anything, oh, wait a minute, I forgot. I have something to show you. Wait, going back. Over here on my table, I told you I was going to tell you about my cigar box. Um, it's my first time decorating a cigar box. I know it needs more stuff, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. Right now, I really just wanted it for storing some items, so I really wasn't worried about how pretty it looked. But what I wanted to show you is, I don't know about you, but when it comes to stamping and using inks, I never remember what type of ink is good for what. So I just put all of my inks on the little cards so I know when I should use distress inks or when I should, not distress inks, but when I should use pigment inks, when I should use stays on, etc., etc., and what not to use. Like we know we don't use stays on ink with Copics. Never, never, never. So that's my little ink types in their applications. Then my spell binders. I used to have all the little cards in the CD boxes with the sets of spell binders and then one day I realized it would be so much easier to decide what shape I wanted to use if I had the little cards at hand so I could look through the cards themselves. So I have, those are the smaller ones and then all my larger ones are here, all my dies. And then years ago, a tip that I got was to use paint chips when you're looking for inspiration or trying to decide how to mix colors. Paint chips are a great way to get that inspiration. And so what I did one day I went to Lowe's and I went through and I picked up every single paint chip that I saw and I just kind of bound them all together using this little screw thing. I don't know what that's called. This actually this actually came from some basil swatches. You know that little box of basil swatches that cost about ten dollars? That's where that came from. So I don't know what you call it, but at the hardware store, I'm sure they could tell you. And then finally in my little cigar box, I have all of my embossing folders. They're embossed on tags. And the entire thing is on a ring. So again, when I'm working on a project and I need an embossing folder or want to emboss, I can look at my patterns, my embossing patterns, decide which one I want to use, and then just go straight to my box of embossing folders and pull it out. Okay? So now I think you've seen everything. And I hope you've enjoyed your little tour of Wrinkle Free Diva's workshop. My security guard is gone. She has moved on to guarding other parts of the house now. And you know that if you have any questions, you want to know how I did something, um, something I forgot to mention, feel free to hit me up on my blog or you can email me at wrinklefreediva at cox.net and I'll be happy to answer your question. Thank you so much for looking.